Airtable just released some new changes in June 2020, and if you want to stay in the know, you don't want to miss this video. One of the biggest features that they added was the button field, and I can't wait to show you some use cases for it. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, I'm Gareth Pronovost. I am the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you want to learn more about how we do it, swing by our website. I'll include a link below and don't miss out on our free Airtable crash course that will get you up to speed quickly with Airtable so that you can stop using it like a spreadsheet. But without further ado, let's jump into it and get into the heart of this video. And that is the new updates that Airtable posted. So sharing my screen here, you'll see that I'm at Airtable.com slash what's new. This is a public facing URL. Anybody can check this out and always just keep up to date with the newest feature releases from Airtable. Now you'll notice that in June of 2020 here, we've got four updates. One of them is the Jira cloud block and we don't use Jira internally at Gap and it's not a tool that I'm that familiar with. I can say briefly that it's essentially a project management and uh, workflow mapping tool. And uh, you know, beyond that, like I said, I haven't really used it. So I'm not gonna be going into any details about how this block uh, functions here today. But that still leaves us plenty to talk about because we have three other new fields that we never had before. And it's kind of a big deal when Airtable adds just one field. So the fact that they gave us three at the same time is pretty awesome. So the first one here is the created by field. Second one is the last modified by, and then the third one's the button field. So let's take a spin into a database that I put together and we can just imagine some you know, scenarios and see what these fields do. So first and foremost, you know, this is a very simple, straightforward database. I really just want to show off these new fields. So the first thing you'll take a look at is that we've got a, you know, it's just a list of contacts. We have full name here. We have a first name and a last name that of course are being uh, added together to make that full name. We have an email address for the different uh, contacts. We store a photo here. We have a button and I'll come back to this that attaches a photo. We have a button that sends an email. We also have a last email sent field where we're recording a date and time. And here's where we're gonna get into the created by field and the last modified by field. And I'll talk about those in a minute. And then I've got a lot of formulas and stuff built over to the side and this will all make sense as we go through. So first let's talk about the created by field. You'll notice that this field uh, is you know, essentially metadata. So as soon as this record is created, it is going to get its value. This field is entirely dependent on whoever created the record. We really have, there are two main buckets that you can consider. That is, if you have a user in your database who's creating a record, then they're gonna show up here. And in this case, you'll notice that I created both of these records. Now, alternatively, a record can be created from an Airtable form. And in that case, this record is gonna be stamped anonymous, or excuse me, this field is gonna be stamped as anonymous because we don't know who submitted that form. Now, I guess there's one other thing to consider, and that might be if you're connecting through Airtable's open API to create a record. So if you built an automated process, for example, that creates a record when somebody submits a form in JotForm or Typeform or Formstack or you know whatever form software you're using, Cognito Forms, there's dozens of them. But if you were to create a record using that integration, because that integration is linked to your account, it's actually gonna show up as you being the person who created that record. So kind of three buckets, but really only two buckets because if you build an automation using some API, it's gonna show up as you. So let me just prove this to you by creating a new contact here. I built an Airtable form and pretty straightforward. We just have first name, last name, and email in the form. So let me go ahead and pop open that form and I'm just gonna create a record for myself. Now, because I'm creating it through a form, again, as I said earlier, we don't expect it to show up as being created by me, but instead as being anonymous. So once I submit that data, we can jump back into that Airtable database and we now see that it was created anonymously. So through an Airtable form. All right, now 
let's take a look at the photo uploader. This particular field is using or showing off the new field called the last modified by. So the last modified by field is very similar to the last modified time. So both of these fields are dependent fields, meaning that they derive their value based on however you set them up, right? You can't actually write data to this just as you can't write data to the created by field, it's metadata. So in this case, uh, for the uh, photo uploader, we're using the last modified by, and what we're doing in this particular case is we have the ability to look at all independent fields, all editable fields. Or we can say, you know what, I just want to know who made changes to this particular field. So more specifically, who made the last changes to that specific field. And so in this case, I'm looking at this photo field. And because I just created a contact here for myself, there is not yet a photo there. And since I haven't added a photo, no one is labeled as the last to modify or update that photo. So let's go ahead and change that. And this is going to take us into the third feature, which is the button field. So the button field here, you'll see that I have the ability to create a nice button. And this is the first time that we've ever had this in Airtable. So pretty exciting. And we have a lot of, you know, things that we can alter and adjust to make this as customized as we want. We can mess with the color. We have a lot of options here. We can mess with the label. So how do we want this button or how do we want it to read? And then, of course, we can also connect it to do its function. What is this button going to do for us? Well, we have a bunch of options. My favorite of these options is actually the open URL. So I'm going to show this off. But first, I want to show off some of the other things as well. So all of the other options other than new URL, all of these options are blocks. So you can open a custom block, you can open or, or attach a photo with the pexels block, you can uh, create a document with form stack block, you know, all of these things run different blocks in Airtable. Very cool. So I'm going to showcase this with the pexels block because I want to bring a photo into this record. So that's how I have this set up. And of course, this requires that I have installed the Pexels block as well. So let's go ahead and take this out for a spin. Let's say I want to attach a record to Gareth's uh, contact data. So I click Attach Photo. It immediately opens up the Pexels block. And you see here that it's giving me some options. Well, I might want to look up a math block. And maybe I really like this, uh, what is this, an abacus? We'll go with that. I'll grab this one and I say attach photo. And because I clicked that block from this particular record, it knows to attach it to this record right here. So after we give it just a few seconds, Airtable creates that record or creates that image now in our photo setup. So really cool feature. But as I mentioned, my favorite feature here is opening a URL. And I think maybe the most powerful type of thing you can do with opening a URL is using a webhook. So if you're not familiar with webhooks, I have done a recent video on them and I'm going to go a little bit quickly in terms of what I want to do here. But what I want it to do is initiate an automation and send an email. So inside of here, what we need to do is write a formula and it, it requires a URL formula. And in this case, I've built a field called prefilled webhook. So let me take you through quickly what I did here. So first and foremost, I start my webhook in Zapier. And in this case, this is my Zapier webhook URL. I grab that from Zapier from my automated uh, source. And then I want to add extra data to the end of that. So here I have the photo text. And this is just looking at the photo field here. And you see that the text for photos is displayed like this. Let me make that as large as possible. You see that it comes in and it has a name and then it has an actual URL to go to. That URL, if I can scrape that out, I can use that in automation. So I want to take to the right of that open parenthesis and to the left of that closed parenthesis, I want that URL. So I went ahead and built a formula that does just that. I'll go ahead and post this underneath the video if you want to just copy this formula take it out for a spin and figure out how it works. But basically what I'm doing is I'm looking for parentheses and I'm saying grab all the stuff in the middle. And then once I have that, I can then pass that to my webhook. So here I built a URL uh, or yes, 
I added on to the end of that webhook and I'm passing a set of parameters. I'm passing an image and I'm passing that photo URL for the image. Then I want to pass the email and I'm passing the email address. And then I want to pass the first name and I do so. And then I want to pass the record ID and I do so. So if you're new to webhooks, again, maybe watch that webhook tutorial. There's a lot in here. But ultimately what happens is when I click that webhook, that's going to tell Zapier that I'm ready to send that or initiate that automation. So let's take a look at what the automation looks like. Inside of Zapier, here's that webhook. And remember when I said that I grabbed that URL, that came right here when I created this. And this, by the way, is just using webhooks by Zapier as the trigger mechanism. And this is a catch hook. Now, when I send through that information, I'm going to get that data broken up from the webhook. So let's actually just take a quick look at how that comes through. Remember, I have those four parameters that I'm passing. I'm passing the image, I'm passing the email, I'm passing the first name, and I'm passing the record ID. Now, this data all came from a previous test, but you can see something similar to this when you set this up yourself. Now, I want to send an outbound email. In this case, I'm sending it from Zapier. Normally, I would send this from Gmail, my own personal Gmail, but I'm just doing it from Zapier for the sake of this. And I'm able to map or pull in those different query strings, right? So here I have the first name. Here I have the email address. Here I'm attaching the URL for that image that we attached. And then lastly, what I'm doing is coming back into Airtable. And I can do this because I have the record ID. So I'm saying, hey, I want to actually update that record that we just sent an email to, and I want to come back in and update it, and I want to update it with Zap MetaHuman Now. And this is a way that we tell Zapier that we want to update with a date timestamp of when this ran. So lots going on here for a simple little automation, but in short, what it's going to do when I click the send email button, it's going to shoot out an email to the email address, including this photo, and from there, it's going to come back in and timestamp when that email got sent. So let's go ahead and take this out and cross our fingers that it works. So I clicked that button. It should be sending that email to me. And as I go back in, you see that it sent that email. So this is really great. I love this. And if I were to pop into my email, I should be able to see this. Let's do that. Here is that email. And this is how we wrote it inside of Zapier. So, hey, Gareth, this is, of course, the first name. Hope this finds you well. Please find the image attached to this email. And here it is. It can be downloaded or added to G Drive. Okay. So, the reason I really like the button, and if this wasn't cool enough already, is that you can write a conditional clause inside the button to disable it when you don't want it to fire. So, for example, I'm imagining a scenario where I require that there is a new... Uh, image in order to send this email. I also require that there is an email address. And I'm also requiring that there is not an email sent already. And so in order to get this, what I'm saying is I need these three conditions to be met. That is, photo has to exist, email has to exist, last email sent needs to be blank. And only when those conditions are met in my if clause, only then am I going to fill out with the specific webhook for this record. And so the end result of this is that now that we've sent this email and we've timestamped when we sent the email, then this is no longer able to be clicked. Or let's say in the case of Mickey here, if I delete this photo, there's no photo, it can't be clicked. Nothing happens. Or if I delete the email address, again, nothing happens. So this is a great way for us to make sure that we only do things once and when we have all of the relative or relevant data in order to do them. So as I said, a couple of really cool new features came out. Hope you enjoyed this and definitely let me know what questions you might have in the chat below. As always, I hope you found that to be incredibly helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, we've put together a lot of resources on our website. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will be delivered to your inbox and get you up to speed quickly and easily with Airtable. And if you're looking for something more complex, we do offer hourly consulting and courses and full-blown development. 
So swing on by and let us know how we can help you further. Look forward to hearing from you soon.